Hey guys, welcome to another video on IGCSE Biology Revision. Today we're going to be covering human influences on ecosystems and this is the very last topic of the Cambridge Biology Syllabus. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So a lot of these are actually quite self-explanatory, but we'll go through, you know, a couple. So first of all, the, the syllabus wants you to understand that, you know, modern technology has uh, been used to increase food supply. And that's quite, you know, we're aware of that, you know, agricultural uh, machinery, uh, chemical fertilizers, insecticides that kill insects to improve the quality and the yield of crops, We've got herbicides to you know, kill off the weed and reduce competition. You have selective breeding, which improves production uh, by crop plants and livestock alike. There are certain negative impacts on the ecosystem. So when we think about large scale monocultures of crop plants, you get a reduced diversity on the ecosystem. Uh, you have increased pests because you have more crops and uh, you have problems associated with overuse of insecticides. In terms of intensive livestock uh, production, there's more chance of a certain disease spreading when you do this, and uh, you get welfare issues between livestock, which can be an issue. So a famine is a very short supply of food, or very short, severe shortage of food. So it can happen due to you know several reasons. One. There's an uneven distribution of food. Okay, so some parts of the world have a whole lot more food than others. Uh, we get drought or flooding that can affect the environment and reduce food. Poverty um, and just an increasing size of the population. The food is limited, but the population is rising, causing um, a famine. So you know, there's. The whole concept of providing a sufficient amount of food for an increasing human global population is well sort of uh, explained in this website here. So I'm gonna live. Uh, I'm gonna leave the link in the description below. I want you to just. So this isn't something you have to fully memorize, but it's really just something that you have to read through and sort of understand the general gist of things. So I want you to just go to this link and have a quick read. Um. So habitat destruction, right? So. Why do they get destroyed in the first place? Well, we are using an increased area of land for housing, food crops, and livestock production and things like that. And we, when we do that, we will need to destroy certain parts of the land, and that land will be habitats for certain animals and plants. Uh, quite often, we need to be extracting natural resources, which can also destroy habitats, um, and marine pollution, uh, you know, Strictly speaking, just the pollution of the sea and things like that, which are affecting the animals that are living inside that sea, uh, because that is their habitat. Uh, speaking of you know habitat destruction, deforest deforestation is uh, you know a, a huge thing, and uh, certainly there are definitely undesirable effects that come with that. So first of all, of course, the most easy point is that it's, it's a loss of habitat for the animals living in the forest, right? So um, another one is reduced uh, reduction in food resources and breeding grounds of animals, potentially, you know, even leading to extinction. Uh, the removal of trees means that there's no roots in the soil, and that unstabilizes a soil and uh, causes soil erosion. Um, there's an increase in greenhouse gas effect, greenhouse sorry effect by increasing increasing the volume of carbon dioxide in the air, because less carbon dioxide will be used by plants uh, for photosynthesis. So there will be more carbon dioxide in the air, and this will lead to the greenhouse effect, which we will be talking about in the next upcoming slide or so. Uh, the the impact on the water cycle, uh, so there'll be less water vapor that's produced because there's less transpiration happening if there's less uh, if there there are less uh, trees, uh, and therefore, if there's less transpiration, then you'll get less rainfall because you know there's less water vapor to condense in the clouds to cause rainfall to begin with. So that's not a good thing. Right. So um, a couple of things about uh, pollution. There's a lot here. We're just going to go through them very quickly. Uh, you can pause the video and have a look at the. Uh, have a look at the notes in a bit more detail if you wish, but um, 
I mean, a lot of these are quite self-explanatory, right? So uh, insecticides, you know, other than killing the actual insects that it's meant to kill, it can kill other harmless animals. Uh, DTT, uh, DDT was an example of this. It was meant to kill, you know, certain types of mosquitoes, but uh, it got absorbed into the food chain and bioaccumulation of this specific uh, substance ended up killing a lot of animals that it really wasn't meant to harm. It, uh, it is banned in most uh, areas now. Herbicides uh, can get washed into water systems and kill aquatic plants. Um, and that leads to the disruption of the food chain. A nuclear fallout basically denotes the leakage of a nuclear power station and as we all know radioactive particles are not good because it can cause cancer. Uh, chemical waste, uh, inorganic waste disposed into water bodies, right? Uh, so this includes metal compounds like lead, nickel, aluminium, aluminium and mercury. And the bioaccumulation of these metals can lead to you know, ser serious problems in the human body, uh, specifically the central nervous system. Uh, the, the waste, uh, including female contraception hormones, uh, apparently if it gets into the into the water and we drink the water, it can reduce the uh, sperm count in men and also change uh, the gender of male fish or some types of male fish in the, in the water. Uh, you know, untreated sewage, we always treat sewage and uh, there's a good reason for that. Uh, so sewage is basically untreated organic waste produced uh, along with household and industrial waste material. So dumping untreated sewage can lead to serious problems. For example, eutrophication. Uh, which can also be due to uh, fertilizers, but we'll talk. A l we'll take a look at that uh, in the future as well. Uh, pathogens inside, or you know, disease-causing molecules uh, and bacteria and things like that uh, may kill aquatic animals if you don't treat the sewage. Uh, waterborne diseases can spread pretty rapidly and affect people that drink the polluted water. And uh, the dumping of plastics. Right, we've seen a lot of videos on YouTube where animals are getting trapped by these plastics. Uh, you know, toxic cases when plastic is burned. Um, as plastics deteriorate into small pieces, uh, these small pieces can be consumed by animals like birds and fish and cause problems in their bodies. So, we briefly talked about eutrophication before. So, untreated sewage or fertilizers are can be introduced into a lake. So there are a lot of nutrients present in sewage or fertilizers uh, such as phosphates, organic matter and uh, bacteria. So what happens is the algae in the lake rapidly grow from the phosphates, phosphates uh, while bacteria rapidly produce, uh, reproduce by feeding on organic matter. So the algae eventually form a blanket on the water surface as you can see which blocks off the light into the lake, so the plants inside the lake get less, uh, less, less sunlight, and therefore have difficulty photosynthesizing. The other problem is the aerobic bacteria; uh, they reproduce rapidly, and they use up all the oxygen from the lake. Meaning, uh, organisms inside the lake, like uh, fish and things like that, they're deprived of not only light but deprived of oxygen as well. Eventually when the oxygen status gets too low, then the organisms will all die out and the lake will just be sort of deserted like this and that's, uh, that's eutrophication. Uh, in terms of the greenhouse effect, we also said that we'll take a look at this in a bit more detail. So the greenhouse gases are gases in the atmosphere that prevent infrared radiation to pass through. And that's very important because it regulates the surface temperature of the earth, right? So we need to have some you know, of these gases that are trapping the heat, otherwise the earth would be way too cold for us to live in. The problem is, due to the industrial revolution, more greenhouse gases are being produced now, uh, more than that is needed. So these gases are like carbon dioxide, methane, uh, CFCs, oxides of nitrogen and water vapor. You are really only needed, you, you just need to know the carbon dioxide and the methane. And so, because we're producing a lot more of these, uh, it tends to be that it's capturing a whole lot more heat in the atmosphere and uh, less infrared heat is escaping. Uh, this means the temperature of the Earth is gradually rising and we call that climate change or global warming. And because of that rise in temperature of the Earth, you know, uh, ice is melting around the world and things like that. So it's a pretty serious problem. 
Uh, so acid rain is uh, caused by the release of nitrogen oxides or sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. Obviously, the, most of these are industrial processes, and sulfur dioxide, uh, you, you'll get that in oil refineries uh, or oil power stations, automobiles. Nitrogen oxide is uh, the reaction of oxygen and nitrogen at high temperatures inside a car engine. Be aware that it's not the car engine that's producing it, it's just the very high temperatures uh, inside the engine that is causing the molecules in the air to react with each other causing nitrogen dioxide, right? So the sulfur dioxide or the nitrogen oxides uh, then react with water and that makes acid rain. So acid rain can be detrimental because it damages the cuticles of leaves to kill the plant, it acidifies lakes to lower the pH and kill the marine organisms living there. Buildings made of limestone are easily damaged from the acidity and aluminium ions are leached out of the soil and washed into water bodies. The solution for this would be using oil instead of coal and oil contains less sulfur, switching on to a more renewable resource of energy and uh, using catalytic converters of, uh, inside a car to convert back the nitrogen oxide into something else so that it doesn't go out into the atmosphere uh, to cause acid rain. Okay, so conserving resources, right? So what is a sustainable resource? It's one which is produced as rapidly as it is removed from the environment so that it does not run out. A non-renewable resource is uh, things that we can't replace, right? Fossil fuel is a good example of this. Coal takes millions of years to make, and at the rate that we're using it, at some point it will run out. So we need to conserve these type of resources. and. We also need to maintain certain resources like forests and uh, fish stocks um, and a lot of these can be sustained via education, you know, legal quotas, uh, restocking and all this type of stuff. Uh, we're all familiar with uh, recycling, uh, the, the idea that we can use what's been used already. So things like paper, glass, plastic, metals, we should try and recycle those. I talked about the fact that we need to treat sewage, right? So how do we treat that? Well, there's a couple of steps. First of all, you have the untreated sewage, right? So what you're going to do is large objects like sticks and things like that are screened out of the raw sewage first, okay? It gets filtered out. Uh, the suspended grit then is allowed to settle through gravity and we call that a grit settling tank. Organic matter is allowed to settle via gravity in the sludge settling tank after digestion in the sludge digester. The remaining liquid goes into an aeration tank which contains stones which have microorganisms just sitting on the surface which digest any sort of remaining organic matter. The water passes out uh, may then also be chlorinated to kill any bacteria to make sure that it's safe to drink but by then you know most of the other stuff have, have already been uh, filtered out like sludge, grit, and all that sort of stuff in the respective tanks, uh, so it's it's been treated and safe to drink. Um, another thing we have to look at is the conservation of species. So you know there are certain endangered or nearly extinct species, right? And the, the reason they become extinct or endangered is because of certain things like climate change, habitat destruction, hunting, pollution, or introduced species which are species that are not native to the specific location and it has a tendency to spread to a degree believed to cause damage to the environment and the other organisms that are living there. So the conservation of endangered species requires us to sort of monitor and uh, protect certain habitats, educate people uh, on the importance of conserving these species, uh, captive breeding programs and seed banks for plants, Okay, so that sort of reserves uh, or maintains the genetics of certain types of plants, right? So the, all these things we can do to try and uh, prevent any sort of extinction. Uh, the conservation programs are important because it obviously reduces or tries to reduce extinction, uh, protects vulnerable environments and maintains uh, ecosystem functions. Right, so that is it for today guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I will be doing a couple of videos on chemistry and physics and things like that. Uh, so, you know, 
Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.